Greetings YouTube, uh, it's Hero of Sparta here for another Rome 2 Siege Battle. Uh, this one should be another uh, juicy fight. Um, in this one I'll be playing Egypt uh, at, with the attackers. Uh, we have Egypt, Arverni, and all the way over here we have Rome. Alright, so uh, with myself I brought mostly Thorax Swordsmen. Egypt really doesn't have that many good mid-tier swords, so these Thorax Swordsmen will, will have to kind of kind of do to be most of my uh, assault wave. I also brought these Carrion Axemen. Uh, these guys are phenomenal when it comes to serving as more of a Thoreo spear, right? They can, they can kind of jabby down the enemy, so very nice. Uh, these Nubian Bowmen as well, these guys are excellent value archers. Uh, they really kind of pay for themselves. Uh, they have 150 range. Uh, decent stats on them, so pretty simple army uh, within itself. Uh, I brought all siege towers uh, in this case, and then a ram as well. Most people don't kind of like uh, want to attack the gate, but in this case, I, I decided to. Here we have Arverni. Uh, they're one of the better uh, factions in the game. They have excellent uh, low tier infantry in these Celtic warriors. We have uh, some chosen swordsmen, which these guys make up the backbone of Arverni's army. And then we have the feared Oath Sworn. These guys are absolutely deadly in uh, single combat. So if they're not getting arrowed down, they're going to rack up a ton of kills. They can easily get 300 kills, to be honest. It's not a stretch. And then here we have Rome. You know, I'm not sure if he was a, a newer player. Um, but, but Rome is definitely going to draw a lot of attention in this battle, as, as they always do. Uh, he brought some auxiliary infantry. Uh, in my opinion, in sieges, these guys are pretty useless. So maybe more of a cannon fodder unit. Uh, some Histadi in the towers. He has his uh, auxiliary Balearic Slingers and auxiliary Syrian Archers. Uh, great uh, range units from Rome. And then here we have uh, Evocati Cohort, which in my opinion, they're one of the most cost effective units in the game. Um, they, they can really even take on other elite units and, and cause tons of casualties. So uh, good on him to bring them. And yeah, just more Evocati cohort. So uh, you know, good good on him. He's gonna he's gonna start his assault, and then as we see later in the battle, he's gonna draw a lot of attention for like what what he's doing. Yeah. So let's 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 get to the battle. Uh, so here again, we're we're attacking on two different sides. Uh, the reason being is just that this wall on this map is just not big enough for more attackers, right? So we're attacking, uh, you know, kind of on on two different fronts. Uh, in this case, uh, Rome is going to draw a lot of attention. They really want to get Rome off the battlefield, so you know he's going to have de Desert Cav harassing him. You know that being said, a lot of people uh, when they play Rome, you know they get they get a little angry that they get more attention. But in my in my opinion, like if you're playing the most p powerful faction in the game, even if they sally on you, right? Uh, I've played Rome before, where I've had I've had uh, Parthia sally with the entire cavalry army. I've had little to no spearmen, right? And I destroy the entire army just because Roman units are so strong. They can stand up to heavy cav charges. Uh, you know, any any projectiles that are thrown at them, you know, they can kill any infantry. So they're they're really the strongest units in the game, right? So anytime Rome sh Rome sees a sally, right, or they see ca cav out here, those are free kills, right? And he should really treat them as such. But as you can see, you know, we have Carthage committing to this, uh, Galatia, which is uh, a great infantry faction they're going to be uh, in this wheelhouse and if we go to our side um, you know we're again attacking the walls together I'm going to be facing primarily Nabatea we just have a little bit of movement in the back lines here some desert levy you know some throwaways Uh, Arverni is pretty good about helping me. He's gonna bring in some Celtic warriors up here. You know, very nice from him. Again, I preferred really to have kind of everyone have you know their section of the front, right? So this could be my section, and Arverni have his right because it's just easier on everyone than micro. But you know, him helping me out is not bad as long as he can keep his micro under control. You know, so again, I'm moving my army up together. I don't see that there's wall artillery, so we're going to be moving up these carrying axemen. Just because when I hit these walls, I want to keep funneling in troops, right? I want to I 
hit the walls. I want to uh, break down uh, these gates. And I want to hit them pretty hard at once. Here we have again more of Nabatea uh, presenting itself. These Nabataean heavy archers, always a staple of Nabataea. These guys are tough to get rid of. They have tons of armor and they're, they're going to be a challenge. I'd say the least. We have some more uh, Nabataean axe warriors. Uh, pretty good uh, infantry. They kind of hold the line here. Uh, we have Galatia. Uh, Galatian swords, you know, some good low tier, medium tier infantry. Right, and as we can see, right, the the defenders, they chose a specific strategy, uh, and they chose to focus on Rome, right? So you see, Carthage and Galatia both have troops that that really want to hold uh, these these areas, right? They they really want they really want to hold these areas, and then they want to attack and cause casualties to Rome as much as possible, right? So I you know. I personally would not have done this strategy, but they're they're gonna commit a ton of troops to Rome, and they're gonna they're gonna you know really fight it out with Rome. But they're gonna leave primarily uh, Nabatea to kind of defend a lot of this, with a little bit of help from Galatia, right? But but primarily Nabatea to help with this, and on top of that, they gave up the walls, right? And this, in my opinion, is a cardinal sin in sieges. Once you give up the walls, right? You've given up a lot of potential kills that you could have gotten. You've given up a lot of casualties that you could have you could have presented an enemy with, right? So I'm just gonna move my men down and start engaging. Right, I've busted through the gates, so I a pretty well coordinated assault if you look at it right. Uh, most of my siege towers disembarked at the same time. I'm just gonna clean up this uh, desert lovely. These guys aren't really good for much, to be honest. You know, and that's part of the opponent's plan, right? They're gonna put. Uh, they're just gonna be trying to delay me, pretty much. Uh, as much as possible. They're gonna try to delay both of us, to be honest. They try to cause some casualties, try to delay us, while they, they really focus on Rome here, right? They have tons of troops sitting here waiting for Rome. And Rome, I'm not sure if he's uh, a newer player, uh, potentially. He seems like he's doing pretty competently in the assault. Um, again, I would have just started moving down here, and I would have went, went full force into this. Uh, he's losing his uh, archers here. You know, this is pretty annoying. Uh, I would say that uh, kind of a disaster, you know. You, these archers really are necessary for the rest of the battle. So, so... This is going to be tough, in my opinion. Yeah, and this is annoying as well. That uh, you know, to me, I think that there's a limit on what a push through is, and a lot of these opponents, right? He's going to try to go around the general. This, in my opinion, could be considered, you know, not a push through. But if he would have, let's say, pushed through the general, which he could have, that that would have been just a clear cut push through uh, on Rome. So, so Rome did lose quite quite a bit of archers. Um, you know, a little bit of a uh, kind of a disaster there, and he's he's, he's going up against a lot, right? This is gonna be a tough battle for him, you know. And uh, kudos to him though, because this is gonna be perfect for our our side, right? I realize that he's getting double teamed, and I basically put in the chat, I tell him to our, my uh, teammate Arverni, just push up, man. Just let's get our men ready and let's push up. Don't wait because they're gonna be primarily focused over here, right? If we look. They're gonna be in the back, and meanwhile, they they did bring a decent holding army, right? A smaller holding army against us, but these are not crack troops, right? Nabataean swordsmen, you know. These are not. Besides these Nabataean heavy archers, there's nothing really to fear here. So I know, you know, they have some desert pikemen, but these guys are not, you know, the bee's knees, right? They're not. They're not anything special. So here I know, right? They're they're at a huge disadvantage. They just don't know it. Plus, they think we're gonna be cautious, like most most uh, like many attackers. I'll say that. not most, but many attackers. But in this point, uh, there's nothing to be cautious about. Move my men up. You know, 
maybe get some javelins on them, but for the most part, just move my men up and start, you know, start the start the war. I honestly should have just charged in. I'm not sure why I, I stopped here. Because look, you lose, you know, 20 men here, uh, 10, 11 men there, and it w it was kind of for no reason, you know. He's gonna lose like two men, so in that case, just better, just better to charge in. No, no, you know, don't try to engage in this little little maelstrom. For glory! But yeah, you know, these Nabatean uh, swordsmen, right? Succeed. They're not, they're not that great. And clearly, if you look at how thin their lines are, right? Once we once we break through here, it's basically a beeline to the capture point. Right here, Arverni again. He he did you know some weird stuff as to why you bring your archers up on the wall necessarily. Uh, I don't know, but they're gonna get uh, chopped up pretty quickly, right? So, you know, you would think that for us. You know, losing Rome lost a lot of archers. Nabatea lost a lot of archers. He's bringing up more archers on the walls. This is a mistake. You know, I'm not sure. You know, like really, your archers should only be on the walls when you kind of secure the area, right? Because you don't want your opponent to focus, focus, uh, focus you guys down, which is what's going to happen here. But either way, right? We're pushing up. He's helping me out. He's kind of bringing, you know, giving me. <laughs> Are. He's kind of given me actually more support uh, than you know than his own army. <laughs> so uh, you know, I guess good on him. But we're just going to be pushing up uh, these Thorax guards. They're going to be you know putting the put in their hurt on these Damatian swordsmen, and we're going to be uh, really putting the pressure on them. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, you know, Rome has taken a ton of casualties. But they're, what they're doing here, in my opinion, is that they're overcommitting on Rome, right? At this point, Rome is not as much of a threat, right, as one would think. He doesn't really have as much infantry uh, to kind of pressure. He does have some quality infantry left, don't get me wrong. This Evocati cohort can absolutely destroy uh, if needed. But, but again, they're keeping an entire Carthaginian army and half a Galatian army here to deal with, you know, to deal with... Uh, Rome. You know, some skirmisher cav here. Um, you know, in siege battles, not really much use for these guys. They're not really that great in melee. Um, they can run down archers, but that's about it. Here we have, um, you know, Galatia did do decent damage to Arverni. And Arverni is now just hesitant on like what he's gonna do again never uh, charge your men up in waves and that's that's really what he's doing here which is which is not great but the good news is that he has kept the cream of his army the old sworn uh, alive so that's gonna play heavily in our favor it's gonna help us out just gonna help us you know kind of win this fight and not not have to worry about it right so over here you know the swords are breaking Again, with Egypt, these Thorax swordsmen are not the greatest, but they're better than these axe warriors and these swordsmen. Right? These are these are kind of more you know, lower mid-tier troops. So I'm just going to keep putting the pressure on them, bring up more men uh, as well. I have my archers in the back here. Uh, the reason I'm not moving them up is because I'm not really kind of too keen on getting into a fight with his Nabataean heavy archers. And he doesn't want to waste ammo on my, you know, on, my, on the fronts of my thorax swordsman. So he's in a, you know, we're kind of both in a bind here, just accepting the infantry fight. Over here, I, I should be, what I should be doing is I should be moving some carrying axemen over. Um, I do see the pikes. Again, with pikes, it's better to save them for later in the game, like when your when your uh, enemies has exhausted their ammo. But in this case. You know, they're not going to save him yet. So here he's doing a good job. One thing he's doing I, that I like is, good, and then good players will do this often, he's not sending his army over here. That's great because he's holding these men, right? Looks like there's a glitch there. But he's holding these men here, 
right? And even though, you know, he's moving some archers up, he's holding these men here, and these men have to respect the fact that Arverni can get on these walls and, and cause a flank. So that's good on us. Here, I'm bringing up, you know, some swordsmen to kind of like ja javy them down. And I'm also bringing up, I should be uh, moving over some carrying axemen pretty soon to javy them down. Carrying axemen, that's really where they prove their worth. It's just their javelin capabilities. Over here, he has a huge problem, right? Uh, these axe warriors are getting chopped up. He He's, uh, you know, he's trying to kill some of these Celtic warriors. The carrying axemen do have a, a decent shield. But yeah, he's trying to kill some of these guys. I'm killing this pike. You know, nothing's going to save your pike. You can't hide behind infantry, to be honest. So I'm killing these pikes. And again, I, he did attack the pikes head on, but I think I'm going to get some javelins in the end. Because these are, these are not the, the good, the good pikemen. They're the desert pikemen. They're a little bit cheaper. Pikemen. Right, so Nabatea, I think, just didn't really realize this was happening. And he almost charges archers into combat. But he's in a huge bind here. These pikes are not going to hold up to anything. Right? They, they've lost a ton of men. These pikes are really going to really gonna suffer. Right, and he doesn't have the men to kind of hold back uh, this tide of war. So he's trying to do everything he can, but again, there's just too many forces arrayed against them for him to be effective here. Uh, Galatia, you know, they, they have to hold here. There's not really a choice. And then for the, for these guys who are opposing Rome, um, they're making a mistake. You know, again, you have Galatia has, you know, a decent amount of units, right? Here, Carthage basically has his entire army just sitting around, right? They they may be trying, be trying to push back a couple units, but really in this case, you know, they have to get on the walls and bring the fight to the Romans, right? The Romans don't have as much. Uh, they're going to, you know, uh, they're getting herded away by these spearmen. I'm not sure why, you know, for Nabatea you'd bring so much calf, but they're getting, this calf is getting herded away. They're not really going to be as useful. They are coming back to get these archers, which <laughs> time for you know time for round two, right? So good on him, good on Nabatia for that. You know, archers are key to your victory. So if if you're just letting them die like this, it's going to be a very tough time, no matter what faction you are. Good on him, you know, Rome's getting his general, which is nice. These Desert Cav are not that great in any uh, any real battle, right? They can't really do much, so they're just going to get cleaned up. So good on him. If we go back to uh, my side of the battle, you're going to see that we're putting in more and more men, and this is just becoming a desperate fight for them. As well as I'm getting my carrying axe to focus down his pipes. Right, so now he's in a he's in a tough spot. The you know this is and this is that point of the battle where I'm that player who's willing to take casualties. Right, he's trying to you know focus down my men. You know, but he's really just kind of wasting his ammo at this point because he's just shooting into the front of their shield, shields. You know, so at this point I'm the player who's saying, hey, I'm ready to take casualties. I'm ready to push the lines. Right, I still have a decent amount of men back here. Which, you know, I, I really should have bring into the settlement at this point. And that's the good thing about Egypt is that you can be so cost effective with your archers that you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be successful uh, in terms of, you know, having the numbers to continue these fights. He doesn't have the numbers. I've, I've uh, bled Nabatea dry. You know, he has caused a decent amount of casualties. He has a good angle here. But he's wasting ammo uh, on these Nabatean heavy archers, and my thorax swords are pretty well armored. They're not gonna, they're not gonna drop uh, for, for, you know, quickly. To be honest. He's making me suffer with, uh, with that catapult. Uh, he's gonna, he's gonna, uh, that catapult is gonna 
get some justice later later in the game. Hey, trying to shoot at my archers. Um, you know, really, I think he probably should have targeted my infantry, disrupted them, but. I don't know why I'm not pushing these men up, but I, I, I should be at some point realize that they're there. And yeah, here again, I've I've you know bled Nebatia Drive infantry. He's kind of giving me a lot of casualties, but that's okay. I have the men to spare. Here, uh, with our Vernie's help, we're pushing through. His general did get caught. And he's gonna try to try to get out of here pretty uh, pretty soon. I I think actually he charged his general in to save his archers. And maybe these are like some uh, some also some archers that are that are uh, out of ammo. But now what he's trying to do is he's trying to retreat like there's no tomorrow, right? He knows he's in a bad spot. He's trying to get his Oranger out of here. Right, let's see how many kills he got with that. He said he only got 57 kills with that. He's trying to get out of there. And I'm going to come over here. And I'm looking for blood, right? I want archers. And I want to kill that catapult. So in this case, we're charging forward. Uh, he's trying he's trying everything in the book to kind of slow me down. That's not going to happen, sir. That is not going to happen. He's trying to save his catapult. And he gets pretty angry, actually, in the game when I do this. But he's trying to save his catapult. We break his archers. Uh, he's trying to sacrifice his general for the catapult. In my opinion, not worth it. Just because, especially with Nabatea, uh, they're, they're more of a barbarian faction. I'm not sure how many of their troops um, can, you know, have a morale penalty because of the general are disciplined and versus the ones that, that need the general. So, in this case, he's going to sacrifice his general, but really, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's going to, uh, you know, uh, and at this point, he's beat, but he's going to try to move his general in the way of my uh, thorax sword. You know, this is annoying to me. I I personally hate players who are. You know they know they're beat, but they're trying to use like the, the, uh, you know, trying to trying to finagle their infantry away, right? Look, he's trying to just trying to save his catapult. It's not going to happen, right? He's he's just wasting my time. He's wasting his time, and then he's just going to turn around and say, "Hey, let me get some kills." Uh, it's not, not going to happen. So it's uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, he just he over micro that, right? It, you know what I mean, man? It's like let let it die, man. Like. At that point, you know, just get the javelins out. Uh, let's put let's put that general to sleep and let's uh, clean this mess up. Even I think he may have killed his own general to be honest. But let's get that poetic justice for the catapult. And here we have a complete big breakthrough. Galatia over here is getting manhandled. Right, with all those men they lost, they just couldn't really hold his front. So he's gonna be pushing in, and I'm gonna be pushing in, right? And here they they make uh, one of their most critical mistakes, right? They still have, and are still focusing an entire two armies against Rome, right? That's how dead set that they are to, to fight off Rome. While leaving us scot-free. So really the MVP of this game even though I would say it wasn't by skill, was probably Rome because he took all this heat and he's distracting, uh, you know, an army and a half over here, right? They're still, uh, you know, they still haven't even moved these Galatian swords in the position, right? Meanwhile, we've broken through, right? And another thing too is that we have this ledge over here, which is going to be key since they don't really have much ammo left. To fight us off. So I took casualties, but I, I have men. You know, these guys. I did, I'm not even sure if I. I just I just completely forgot about them to be honest, <laughs> which is kind of sad to be honest that I had these men just sitting here. Um. But yeah, I forgot about them, unfortunately. And here again, they they've made a huge mistake. They they've you know overly focused on that on the other side of the battlefield with Rome. And they just left us wide open. So what are we going to do? Get our archers in position. And we're just going to take them out. You know. Galatia is streaming back men. 
but you know at this point um i would have just retreated everybody back i i would have just you know assemble at the town uh town center and and you know launch a last ditch defense i think carthage does have ample amount of men that they can retreat back it's not worth uh it's not worth like what's going on here he's not really going to get a lot of of uh, what's going on here but anyway i'm bringing my archers up on this ledge they, they don't really have that many archers left i think they have some nabataean heavy archers uh mercenary syrians from galatia and they don't have much left um he, he is trying to bring out some uh Skitar skatari iberian swordsmen um not bad infantry Over here, I think he's trying to skirmish down these Celtic warriors, which is a good idea. They don't really have that much uh, ammo to be on, or they don't have that much armor to be on. And he's he's you know at this point they're really in a tough situation because I have my archers up on the ledge, right? We have uh, a full-on infantry attack, and they don't have much infantry. So this is why, you know. This is why you really keep, I advocate one army per front, right? Because if you notice back here, they have an army and a half fighting over here. So they're distracted over here. And then they have an army and a half, right? Mixed army, three armies really fighting over here. So two of the players are distracted on the other side and over here, right? So they can't really mount an effective defense. And that's what you're seeing here is that they're about to give up a flank. Right, because he's trying to micro in too many places. Another thing too is that I'm I'm focusing down uh, his Cretan archers. Right, I'm pretty sure he's microing elsewhere, so he just doesn't even realize it. Yeah, so these guys are pretty much done. Then I'm gonna uh, go for these uh, Galatian swords. Again, Galatia really you know needed to pull back more to be honest. Uh, Arverni is coming in. They're doing a great job of just uh, flanking them, right? Uh, they do not have much here. You know, this is a grim situation, and I'm not even sure. Yeah, I have these two infantry back here again. This was a boneheaded move on my part, not to see them. But either way, um, we're pushing men up. They're not. They're not going to really be able to contest us, to be honest. See the battle. Yeah, so arrows flying, you know, a, a tight battle line. But we are going to be able to overwhelm them. Again, I'm, I'm what I call bodying him, right? I'm, I'm putting the full force of my army. I have more funds. And I, I, I can just basically body him all the way to the, the town center. Right. And I have the archers to even, uh, you know, fire in their flanks. So they're not going to, they're going to have a tough time really doing anything. This is kind of a waste of ammo, to be honest. I don't think they had, they had any ammo. I'm just going to go off this Libyan. Not a, not a concern. Right. At this point, you know, not as much tactics. My carry and axemen are putting in work. Yeah, good 58 kills, and they haven't even touched seen combat, so very nice. Uh, over here, the old sworn. Once the old sworn show up, it's pretty much over. I'm not sure what he's doing right here. He's just kind of you know, falling back a little bit. Trying to avoid some arrow fire, but yeah, it's, it's weird. And again, the, the defenders they're just content, you know, they're they Rome is pretty much gone to be honest, but they're content with leaving their men here. So I'm not sure what the deal was as to why they would just leave their men, uh, you know, in this in this little uh, area, right? They they if they would have brought these men back, I think they would have had a great chance at winning, but they're content with doing this, you know, I want to break Rome down. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Carthage. 
Carthus tries to get his general out. Uh, not on my watch. There are no cowards in this battle. Oh, we're just gonna focus him down. Yeah, so this battle really, again, there was not, I would say, too much that was special about it in terms of uh, maybe tactics, but strategically, it was a great play on our part and a big blunder on the opponent's part, right, where we saw that they were focusing on Rome, right, uh, on the back end. So we pushed pretty aggressively, uh, casualties be damned, right? We pushed up, and we captured um, this town center, right? Meanwhile, they have their entire army over here just just wasting time you know at this point I think they know they lost uh, even if they would have ran their men full speed here you know I had archers on the high ground um, they I don't think they would have beat the timer anyway over here he does have some archers and he has some Galatian swords this one was puzzling to me this is really puzzling to me is that he had these guys they were either running back from the main fight well, actually, it looks like they're, they're not even that tired. So I'm not sure if he forgot about them. He had them in a crevice or something like that. But uh, this was kind of a mistake by him, to be honest. Advance at speed. So I'm just going to come in and you know clean up these archers. Right, that's basically the battle, and this really teaches you the nature of strategic thinking, right? Can you st uh, think strategically as well as tactically, right? Because you need both in essence, but can you can you think in both ways so you can win the battle? You know what I mean? Can you think of, hey, do I want to win the battle or do I want to rack up kills, right? It's, it's kind of a kind of a trade-off, right? In this case, we had, you know, Rome who was willing to take all that heat, right? He didn't quit when he saw that his army was in trouble and that he was getting double teamed. He took the heat. And he, he, I believe, was the MVP, even though he was not, uh, I would say, the most skilled of player. He just took so much heat from the enemy that uh, it allowed us to kind of uh, body them on our side and force our way into the, into the main settlement. They, they, I would safely say, did not have a, a good chance of winning uh, once, once they failed to shift their troops. Because once, once the attackers take the town center, you know, it's really hard for you to mount a counterattack because typically you won't have as many troops as them, right? So, so defending is your advantage. In this case, we're just cleaning these guys up. We're gonna get some old sworn coming up here, just trying to. You know. So yeah, so this battle's pretty much over. We're just gonna fast forward uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. So, so again, a good victory. Uh, you know, a good job by all of our opponents, really allowing myself, uh, Rome really allowing myself and Arverni to get the win. Uh, thanks, YouTube, for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.